Good morning, everyone. Full today. <laughs> I hope and I pray that the Lord who pushed you to come to church today, who knows why you are here in front or in the back seat, knows what you have in your heart and will reveal to you, give to you what you need today. We will talk about forgiveness in the family. When we talk about forgiveness, sometimes we do not understand why, but it's hard. But forgiveness can sometimes even seem mysterious or complicated because God's forgiveness is such an, an incredible gift to us that it's beyond our comprehension. Before we can help our children, learn about forgiveness, we need to reflect on what it means to be forgiven by God. Micah, Micah, Micah chapter 7 verse 18 reads, There is no other God like you. You forgive sin, pardon the rebellion of those who remain among your people, you do not remain angry forever, but delight in showing loyal love. We don't have such kind of loving for sometimes with our own spouse or even our own children. But God tells us that even when we do not do right, He still loves us. And that's when forgiveness comes. The starting place for forgiveness is in the very heart of God and in our understanding of His loving character. Before we can help our children to understand forgiveness, we need to experience ourselves God's amazing, lavish and loving forgiveness for ourselves. It is difficult to convey the wonder of God's gifts of grace to others without having this personal and multidimensional awareness of His forgiveness in our own lives. God has already given us the gift of forgiveness. We just need to accept it. He longs for us to come to Him and experience the wonderful sense of being washed clean by Him, being given a fresh new start. He takes our sins away, loses them forever, forever. And we don't have to be burdened and dragged down by the things we have done wrong. He wants to make sure that there are no obstacles or barriers between us and Him. So that we can truly enter an unhindered, joyful, loving relationship with Him again and again. Free from fear, free from guilt, free from shame, free from embarrassment. Once we have experienced the magnitude of God's forgiveness in our own lives, we need to offer it freely to each other. Ellen White says, in God's forgiveness, please come back. In God's forgiveness, the heart of the erring one is drawn close to the great heart of the infinite love. The tide of divine compassion flows into the sinner's soul and from him to the souls of others. When we have accepted God's forgiveness, understand it, experience it, we can therefore share it with others. We need to offer it especially to those in our own home. When we learn how to forgive our spouse well, our children can see, hear, understand what healthy forgiveness looks like. And when children experience a powerful forgiveness of their parents, it helps them to understand something of God's forgiveness and grace too. Solo parents can demonstrate forgiveness with other adults in their lives, as well as with their children to give them a living experience of grace. Ellen White says again, We are not forgiven because we forgive, but as 
we forgive. I repeat, we are not forgiven because we forgive, but as we forgive, the same way we forgive to each other. The ground of all forgiveness is found in the unmerited love of God. But by our attitude toward, toward others, we show whether we have made that love our own. Before we consider forgiveness, we also need, next, to understand our children's behavior. It is important, next, to differentiate between their mistakes, accident, and develop developmental stage, and their willful and inten intentional wrongdoings. First, it is important not to punish or discipline our children for the things that are done because they are too young to understand what they are doing, not yet physically able to manage the task. For example, just uh, knocking off a glass over the table. Uh, they are sometimes too young to, too young to assess the risk and understand the consequences of their actions. These are situations of parental responsibility not children's misdemeanors, it can take confusing and frightening for them when they expect them, sorry, I repeat, it can be confusing and frightening for them when we expect them to ask for forgiveness when they don't really understand what they have done wrong. And sometimes we are the one who contribute to their crisis of behavior. Second, it is also important for us to check what we have, that we have met our children's physical and emotional needs. Are they tired, angry, unwell, frustrated, afraid, confused, overstimulated? What about our children's relation, relational and bonding needs? Are they longing for some mom's and dad's attention? Do they need a warm hug and some lovely time in with us to make them feel connected and special? Have they been struggled with a difficult task or situation on their own and they just want us to slow down and help them? Do they feel unsafe for some reason? These powerful experiences can flood a child system and make it really difficult for them to manage their own behavior well. As parents, we need to take responsibility for not meeting the child's needs and to do everything possible on our own to put things right again. Third, the time when we do need to think uh, about supporting our children uh, through forgiveness is when they have intentionally and willfully disobeyed or cross a boundary. This is when they most need to accept responsibility for their actions and the hurt they have caused to others. They also need to accept the responsibility of asking for forgiveness, offering it to others and repairing their broken relationship. Another important way that we can help our children learn about how to forgive is by apologizing to them as parents, asking them for their forgiveness when we have hurt and upset them intentionally or not, when we show our willingness to recognize our wrong, apologize and ask for our children forgiveness, we set a powerful example for them to follow and we make it much easier for them to do the same with us or with others. Some parents are concerned sometimes that if they apologize to their children, they will, see, they will be seen as weak. But being able to apologize humbly and lovingly to others, especially to our own children, is a sign of great maturity and strength. I need to look out for signs that I may have caused hurt to my children. Maybe 
I shouted at them or responded to them angrily instead of patiently. Maybe I hurt their tender feelings and shamed them, publicly or not. Maybe I caused them to fear me or I exasperated them. Do my child look sad, goes quiet, hides from me? I take a deep breath, gently and warmly ask them if I have hurt them in some ways. Bedtime is also a good time to check out if I need to apologize to my child or if I need to experience who they need to experience our forgiveness for something they have done wrong during the day. Just as God makes the first move towards us when we have seen and need forgiveness, so we need to consider making the first move towards our children of any age when they need our forgiveness. Researchers at Penn University have discovered that when a teenager has been in conflict with a parent, as long as the relationship is restored and a strong reconnection occurs before bedtime, then the teenager can recover fairly quickly from the event. But if the, relations, if the relationship is still strained, cold, hostile overnight, then the teenager is more likely to feel sad, anxious about what had happened, and they may even become depressed. The experience is likely to be similar or even more intense in younger children. The, what we need to do, therefore, repair quickly, forgive quickly. Another point, whenever we begin to learn a new skill, it is better to start small. And small doesn't mean for just small scenes, scenes are just scenes, we need to start small when the children are small. Helping children to grasp the process of apologizing and offering forgiveness in the little everyday hurts at home will help them to develop the skills they can apply to bigger hurts later in life. So look for good opportunities to help your children practice the skills that are described below. I will come to that in a little while. Let us coach them warmly encourage them in their up and down journey and learning how to ask for and how to offer forgiveness. One way to illustrate the process of forgiveness in a way that children can understand is to think about the hurtful situation for, from four different places. And the first places is where we need to experience God's forgiveness is in the very heart of God, his love for each of one of us. He loves the person who has caused the hurt as well as the person who has been hurt. It is important for us to understand the generosity of God's loving forgiveness towards each of his children. The second is in each person's shoes so that we understand the effect of the hurtful experience on each person involved whether they may have been hurt or whether they have caused the hurt. The, fourth, the third place is where we look at the situation through a magnifying lens to identify the damage done to the relationship in a closer de uh, detail and also through a telescoping lens to look at the future of a relationship. The fourth place is in the mending kit or the toolbox where we look for the best way to repair the damage to the relationship. These four places of forgiveness are more described in the complete document that can be shared just behind if you go out, you can take a copy. They highlight 
very practical ways on how to apply forgiveness within the family, between spouses, between parents and children, and between siblings. Keep telling positive stories of forgiveness. As a family, talk about positive stories. Look at the stories of the Bible. Jacob and Esau, Joseph and his brothers, the woman caught in adultery brought in front of Jesus by the Pharisees, Zacchaeus in the tree, the stories of a prodigal son when nobody expected home, expected him home, the father was already at the door looking far away if by chance he would be coming home. But also in another side, the parable of an unforgiving servant, when we don't forgive what happens. Also explore Jesus' forgiveness of the people who killed the thief on the cross. Peter, after he denied Jesus, all of them were forgiven by our Savior. Tell also your own stories of people who have forgiven you and what that meant to you. How you learn to forgive others and the difference it has made in your personal life. If you can't think of a personal story, then think about something you need to apologize for or someone you need to forgive and put your learning into action. You can even invite your children to pray for you as you go through the process of reconciliation. Even though you might feel vulnerable, you will be setting your, uh, to your children a powerful example. Lastly, forgiveness is a life skill. The skills needed to forgive others and apologize well are important life skills for everyone. Keep studying God's loving and learning about his forgiving character and talk about his ex your experience of his love and grace to your children, to those you meet. Keep practicing, keep modeling, keep using the skills as a family so that they become for you a second nature. These skills will help you and your children to become good peacemakers in your family and communities, people who will be called children of God. Matthew 5, verse 9. But remember, two Bible texts here, abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine, no more can you except you abide in me, John 14. Second text in Ephesians chapter 3, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Remember, even if we have to learn this life skill, remember that if it's difficult for me to forgive, it's even more difficult for my child to forgive when they are not used to. And even more difficult if I do not set an example of forgiveness regularly. To convey such example, I need to recognize and to choose to regularly contemplate and experience God's example of forgiveness. For that, God has promised He is more than willi willing to work in us, both to will and to work for His good pleasure, if we are willing to ask for His help as we continue working out our salvation with awe and reverence. I cannot do that on my own. Reconciliation is not in human's nature. It comes from God as much as forgiveness. Last quote. 
Let Christ, the divine life, dwell in you and through you. And uh, sorry, let Christ, the divine life, dwell in you and through you reveal the heaven born love that will inspire hope in the hopeless and bring heaven's peace to the sin stri stricken heart. As we come to God, this is a condition which meets us at the threshold that receiving mercy from Him, we yield ourselves to reveal His grace to others. Reconciliation starts with forgiveness and the first place where we meet and do experience such ex do have such kind of experience is at the Lord's table. Matthew 26 verse 20, 26 and following as Jesus shows to his disciples first to wash their feet. He is willing to say whatever you have done and whatever you will do I'm willing to wash that away. And what he says after he has given the bread and the wine, he says, This is my blood of a covenant which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. May we experience that today and as much as we go home, we will do our best to ask God to experience that in our own family. Amen.